First things first, this product arrived unsolicited. No money changed hands and none will come my way through any online sales. Now, 35 kilograms or 416 ounces is quite a claim, especially since this Serbo is smaller than a certain popular model, I own three, with a big 20 on the side, representing 20 kilograms of torque. With that in mind, I'm gonna start by inspecting inside the blue Servo before evaluating its pull. Then I will use it to steer my truck in a manner that has destroyed other servos I own. So let's get started. No unboxing bliss, just plastic bags. You get a variety of horns, good for aircraft. For us crawlers, there's a robust looking horn made of unidentified alloy, the split kind that clamps with two tiny screws. More about this Phillips screw later. Moving on, this servo says waterproof on the side. So let's drop it in a jar and look for bubbles. Waterproof is a tall claim and here we see the red servo bubbling where the wires exit the case. Generally what you want are rubber gaskets, the more the better. Budget servos like this one rely on friction instead. and it has just one gasket or O-ring around the output shaft. Now let's look at the blue servo. First, there are O-rings around every head of the screws that hold the sections together. And as we pull apart those sections, we find two more gaskets. While we're in here, these big fat gears are consistent with those found in powerful and or expensive servos. And I like this daub of grease put on at the factory. Another sign of quality are wires off the bottom of the motor. In cheap servos, the motor poles are soldered directly to the circuit board, making it impossible for the average hobbyist to remove and replace the motor. You have to throw away the whole thing. This coreless motor looks like a real good motor too. Putting the pieces back together, everything fits precisely. Check my work. No bubbles. Now, about torque. I lack the equipment to provide a digital readout, but you can find that elsewhere online. What I can do is compare to a benchmark using a simple setup with a radio, an ESC, and a bucket. First, let's see how the 20 kilogram servo does with the bucket empty. It should be easy, and it is. Now we're going to dump in three quarts of water or about 100 ounces of dead weight. Can it lift three quarts of water? Here goes. No problem. Now, let's double it. At six quarts or 200 ounces, the red servo struggles. Now for the Savox 0251, rated and verified at 222 ounces. Walking the talk, the 0251 gets it done. By the way, Savox servos are respected for being tough, notorious for not being quiet. Now the blue servo at a full six quarts. Wow, barely breaks a sweat. And during many cycles, I felt no heat whatsoever coming off the case. Therefore, we can assume that it exceeds 222 ounces of torque, and I would say by quite a bit. Bear in mind as well that my ESC is putting out just six volts for this test, while this servo can take up to 7.4 volts. Finally, no review is complete without a real world test, so it's off to the skate park. Spoiler alert, after an hour of hard driving, I could feel the steering getting sloppy, and when I checked, the servo horn had spread apart, failing to clamp the output shaft. Luckily, nothing was ruined, and with a tiny Allen key, I was able to get enough bite to tighten the clamp back up. 
for the threaded hole in the output shaft, I had already gone to a 10 millimeter long hex cap. After the skate park run and a very wet ravine trail run, my assessment is top quality case, impressive internal components, lots of torque, fast response. This servo deserves a place in my 10-2. I will update the comments section in the future when I have some sense of its long-term reliability. Until then, thanks for watching, enjoy the other two videos, get out there with your own cars and trucks, and have fun outdoors.